Across the mountains on the Pacific coast in Washington state, veteran hunter and Rockingham County police officer Kenny Cooper was driving along this road when he heard a weird noise. I was coming down north on this road here and I heard some noise screaming back in here. And all the time I was going along, he was screaming. And everybody in Whatcom County could hear it because I did have the police mic outside. So uh, they were listening to whatever it was that I was hearing. And the noise that was coming from that creature is what well, was on the recorder here. We took that recording, we sent it into the lab to have it analyzed and it came back that there's no metallic noises in the recording anything that wasn't made by some kind of a machine. And they said there's no voice, uh, no human has vocal cords enough to throw the high pitches and the low pitches at the same time that was coming from then. It was at this time that the former police chief received a flood of Bigfoot calls. I answered so many calls on him that people were making fun, saying that we were seeing things that were smoking dope, that we were drinking or something, and there was no such thing. And the more they taunted about it, the more I wanted to prove there was such a thing without killing him. I did not want to kill this animal. I wanted to prove that he existed. One night, he came face to face with the monster. Would he finally get his proof? I received a, a prowler call at Emma Smith's residence on Scott Road. I was going north on Chief Martin Road, which is just off on the Scott Road. I could hear this screaming. I could see this thing running right toward my car. As it came into my bright light, I could see it was a Sasquatch. He had his mouth wide open, showing me all of his teeth. He was coming at me in an aggressive manner. At this point, his police radio picked up a loud, pusing noise. It's a very high-pitched, squealing, blood-curdling, make your hair stand on edge scream. Police headquarters was able to record what is said to be the call of a Sasquatch. Who or what is responsible for this intense shriek? The evidence was taken to a mammal expert to be analyzed. I've heard it and it's like nothing I've ever heard before. It's a noise, but whether or not an actual creature made that noise, that's, I can't determine that. It doesn't sound like anything that I am familiar with and I certainly am familiar with almost all the mammals that are in North America and their calls. Could this rare tape be proof that Bigfoot exists? He looks so human. Their facial features are, are so much like our own that it's almost like he's a, where did you come from? What are you? I want to talk to you, I want to communicate. There's not a doubt in my mind that Sasquatch exists. Recently, more evidence has begun to surface. An increasing number of photographs and footprints have led hundreds of people to conduct their own search for Sasquatch. With this convincing background, I now thought it best to talk to a trained observer who personally discovered such giant tracks, like newspaper man Ed McLarney of Stevenson, Washington. I turned my head and looked in the direction Marv was pointing. Down, down below us, for as far as the eye could see, were two sets of tracks coming parallel up this terrifically st steep ridge. They crossed the road. We walked up the road just a little bit farther, and they crossed the road right in front of us. Big, big tracks. They were firm tracks, and obviously the kinds of tracks that people have talked about when they've described Bigfoot. And what was especially convincing was the terrific distance between footprints. I have got pretty long legs. I'm nearly 6'4", and uh, I could not, in trying to stretch my feet, uh, could not duplicate what we were seeing there. I had to jump from one track to another to, to duplicate the distance between tracks. 
In the first place, I do not think that any human being would have been physically capable of marching up that ridge in that deep snow in the second place that superhuman strength was required to do it. For years, the only proof of Bigfoot's existence were the accounts of eyewitnesses and the plaster casts of footprints. It's only now, during the last decade, that proof in the way of physical evidence has begun to be accumulated. Here, in these woods, in a remote region of the High Sierra, some of that evidence has been collected. It was in the fall of 1972, and three men, Alan Berry, Rick Murphy, and Tim Sawyer, had just discovered human-like footprints 20 inches long. They'd heard about the creature called Bigfoot, but they never thought they'd encounter it. The men were relaxing after a hard day in the woods. I'll tell you, the next time we're coming out, he's doing the cooking, not you. <laughs> All right, I don't, I don't need any ribbing about that. Yeah. Though, you know. I told you guys I came up here as the guy. The guy. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that? Yeah. Listen, uh, next time, uh, Mel can do the cooking. Oh, um, that's, that's a good idea. Well, I'll go home with Barry Berry. Berry. <laughs> <laughs> I told you like I would. Hey, the guy. Hey. Do you see? Listen. Sounds like my mother-in-law. Hey, don't joke around. Listen. anything like that before. Me neither. I'm going to get that on the tape recorder. Fortunately, on this trip to the Sierras, Alan Berry had his tape recorder along to record the sounds of various birds and animals. Yeah. Calmly, Let's he reached for up, this right? and not for his rifle. Where's it coming from? I don't know. Robert Sheldon. Not knowing what strange creature made these sounds, Dr. Sheldon subjected them to a rigorous computer analysis. How do you go about analyzing these tapes? The first thing we do is to digitize this, the sound into the computer. Digitizing consists of converting each second of sound into 20,000 numbers uh, that are stored in the files on the computer. We can select uh, any portion of this we'd like and uh, do a frequency analysis on this portion. We've chosen the ah sound from the tape because it seems to have an unusual formant structure. You mean that you've picked uh, just a certain part of this tape, one section of it? We've taken a section of this tape for analysis, much like a scientist might take a piece that he wants to analyze and look at it under a microscope. This particular sound that we're looking at has a frequency structure that's lower than the normal male human voice. For example, we could do a sample of your voice, and then we could compare the uh, analysis of your vowel with the analysis that we have from the tape. We could speak into the microphone here, and we can record that into the computer. Uh, just uh, say, ah. of the two printouts showed that the creature's vowel sound peaked early, higher than mine. My sound edged out at a secondary lower peak. I asked Dr. Sheldon what he could learn from these comparisons. Human male has a vocal tract uh, on the average of about 17 centimeters long. This analysis tells us that based on the formant frequencies of this sound, we would have a vocal tract of about 
25 centimeters long. You see, so that could give you some idea of the size of whatever creature made the, the noise. Uh, yes. We could say that, that the vocal tract that produced these sounds would have been at least 50% uh, larger than a human male. And that means that if I'm over six feet tall, the creature that made this sound must be over nine feet tall. Uh, that's probably true, yes. Are there any other tests that you can do to, to uh, analyze the tape? We can do what we call a formant track. That's, uh, it's similar to a voice print. It's a newer and better way to do a voice print analysis on the computer. We can look at the movement of the frequencies and say something about the articulatory flexibility. During the 15 minutes of sound on this tape, uh, we have examples of three vowels, a, eh, a, eh, and o. Oh but nowhere on the tape is there the sound E. Now the sound E requires moving the tongue forward in the mouth. And uh, if we look at the uh, physical structure of, say, a gorilla, the gorilla has the neck at a different angle and it's impossible for the gorilla to move his tongue forward in order to make the E sound. Uh, the fact that we don't see this sound on the tape uh, suggests that this creature perhaps had, uh, did not have the ability to make that sound. Do you know what made these sounds? No, I don't. Well, the first Exhibit C. The, the sounds made by an unknown creature, probably Bigfoot.